So why do they not want you to know the real stories? Why are we being fed stories like George Washington and the apple tree? Because a well-told story can be revolutionary. It can dismantle power structures, build communities, and change the world. Your story is your power. And the more we share our stories and our ancestors' stories, the more control we take back. Hi, I'm Danielle Romero. Thank you so much for being with me here on my channel where we talk about American identity and family stories. Have you ever asked yourself, who really holds the power in society? Some people will answer that question and say, oh, the Illuminati, <laughs> the celebrities, the ultra rich, the president holds the real power, this political party holds the real power. I want you to think on a more granular level. Think about the stories that you grew up hearing as a child. Maybe stories from your family, stories about your family, lessons in school, even the news that's kind of on in the background. Now, imagine if these stories were different. Imagine if these stories were not even real. Do you ever wonder why certain stories just stick with us, like everybody knows that? Usually it's because they carry a powerful meaning that resonates with us on a deep level, a subconscious level. So let's take the story about George Washington and the cherry tree. This story was famously recounted by someone named Parson Weems, the greatest name of all time. <laughs> and he portrays George Washington in this story uh, as a symbol of honesty and integrity. And so you know the story. There's like George Washington's a little boy. I think he's like six or seven. And he confesses that he chopped down a cherry tree. His father had given him an ax for his birthday or something and he wanted to test it out. He ends up chopping down one of his father's beloved cherry trees and when his father asks him about it he says I cannot tell a lie. I, I feel like I remember as a kid hearing being told this story and you're just like look how great George Washington was. Even as a little boy he had this integrity, this honesty and and that's why he was the kind of person that was able to bring us through the season that we went through. But what if I told you that the story was completely made up? This is a total lie. This never happened. So the painting that was on the thumbnail, Grant Wood's painting, is shown pulling back the curtain on a story. Parson Weems, he's the historian who invented the cherry tree tale. He invented it in 1806. So in this picture, you can see that it's like a very brightly lit scene. You have George Washington, who for some reason has an adult head on <laughs> his child's body, and his father is, is there. So the artist portrays this as a fable. It's like a story. It's a play. You even see the curtain being pulled back on this story. The painter's unique portrayal of this fable highlights its artificial nature. It's presented like a staged play rather than a real event. And amid the action, in the background, you see two what look like enslaved people picking cherries in the background, which is a reference to Washington's slaveholding past and a poignant reminder of what often gets left out in historical myth-making. Now, before people jump down my throat about being woke, this painting was painted in the 1930s. And it prompts us to ask the question, when we're looking at the history we've been taught, what has been left out of that story? What has been changed in that story? What has been made up in that story and why? So why do we create and perpetuate these myths? The answer lies in the power of stories and storytelling. Stories serve as vehicles for conveying cultural values and shaping our collective identity and our collective understanding. They simplify complex ideas and they make it accessible and memorable. Washington's cherry tree story is not just supposed to be a story. It's supposed to be a moral lesson wrapped in a narrative that has now shaped perceptions of American virtue for centuries. Uh, this tradition of storytelling as a means to convey deeper truths isn't unique to American history. Even Jesus used parables. He told simple, vivid stories that weren't things that had actually happened to conve convey profound spiritual truths. He shares the story of the Good Samaritan and the prodigal son, among others, not to just entertain the people that came to listen to him. These were powerful tools for teaching moral and ethical lessons. But through the parables, these complex spiritual and moral truths were made accessible to everyone, regardless of their level of education or background. I've taught children of all ages and even adults in some scenarios, and there's one thing that I have learned. If you 
can explain the idea and a story, it's going to resonate with people. They're going to remember it. They're going to be able to picture it happening in their mind. We tell stories all the time. We say, oh, my neighbor told me this. Isn't this funny? And we pass these stories on. And we like telling stories. We like listening to stories. They resonate with us on a personal level. We see that they serve a greater purpose. But stories are not just tools of education, moral instruction, and cultural transmission. I double majored in American history and Soviet history, and I took some classes on Soviet propaganda. And we watched films in Russian, because I was supposed to be learning Russian. Uh, we watched films in Russian and kind of stopped to discuss the way that the stories were told and the way that things were presented to the Russian people to convince them to start seeing things through a certain worldview. And I think understanding the hidden influence of stories, historical stories, helps us to appreciate the profound impact that our storytelling can have on our collective identity. But storytelling isn't merely about recounting the events that have happened to us. It's about framing these events, giving them meaning and influencing how they're perceived, which is not always a bad thing. I think sometimes there is a bad rap for when people say, well, you're not unbiased. You need to be completely unbiased. And no one's completely unbiased. I think uh, it's a great I ideal, but I think also the beauty of storytelling is hearing the voice of the character. Um, I'm an avid reader, and I have to say, I really like the opportunities in fiction when we really get to get inside a character's head and and not just hear what they're saying, but hear their thoughts, kind of look through the world from their eyes. And I think that's one of the beautiful things about hidden history and, and studying these uh, hidden stories is that you get to experience events through somebody else's eyes. And yeah, it's going to be heavily biased, but I think the danger is not having history that's biased. It's having history that's only biased one way. And I think the George Washington, the cherry tree uh, example is extremely important because it was, it was shocking to me to find out that that was a complete fabrication. But then I think what was even more shocking was that was one of the most well-known stories about George Washington and it was made up. And so it, it kind of gave me pause because there's things that I have been told in school or learned from wherever. And I just kind of parroted that information. I just assumed it was true because everyone else agreed. Yes, George Washington chopped down this cherry tree and blah, blah, blah. And we don't check for ourselves. And that's so important. Here in the channel, I always encourage you, don't take my word for it. Go to the primary sources, wrestle with it yourself and, and do that. When we look at history as stories and, and not just a sheet of facts, uh, we can understand how being selective with stories that are shared or not allowed to be shared can influence beliefs and attitudes. Stories have a profound psychological impact on us. I was thinking about this video because someone had shared a Plato quote, which I thought was an incredible quote. Those who tell the stories rule society. And I thought, what an amazing quote. So then I went to go look for the source and guess what? There is no source for that quote as far as I can tell. It's also a made up quote that's been attributed to Plato. And I think uh, maybe it's one of those things where it's the sum of all parts and someone just kind of condensed it and said, and this is what Plato said. And again, it's another instance of we have to be able to fact check the stuff that we're hearing. And I almost got tricked on this because I almost just went full on with this, this quote. But Plato's allegory of the cave reminds us that enlightenment comes from turning away from the shadows and seeking truth. The scripture also talks about that that everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. It's a call to dig deeper, to question, to uncover the stories that have been hidden. So why do they not want you to know the real stories? Why are we being fed stories like George Washington and the apple tree? Because a well-told story can be revolutionary. It can dismantle power structures, build communities, and change the world. Your story is your power. You were placed in the place that you were, I believe, for a reason and a purpose. And the more we share our stories and our ancestors' stories, the more control we take back. Don't let your narrative be written by somebody else. Tell your family's story. Share your family experience and watch how the world changes. Thank you so much for being here. And we'll talk soon.